Mike Phillips. I am the CEO or Chief Education Officer for DrBeasleys.com. And uh, we are in the brand new OR or operating room here in sunny Stewart, Florida. And today is going to be our first live online detailing class. And for the topic for this class, we're going to go over subsurface machine polishing. So there's two kinds of machine polishing glass. There's topical, and that's where you're removing things like water spots, drizzle stains, road film, or as they say across the pond, traffic film, just any kind of the gunk that builds up on the glass that you want to get off, especially if you're going to put a glass coating onto any glass. The other type of glass polishing is subsurface, and as the name implies, now we're going for defects that are below the surface or in the glass. And this is a beautiful example. This is my friend Angel's 1987 Chevy Stepside Shorty, and he purchased it this way, and it's a father-son project that they're going to fix up. And it actually works great for a demonstration for us today because it's got horrific or horrible wiper marks. So the wiper marks are basically at one point the wipers wear out and then they start to abrade and scratch the glass. And sometimes the actual bracket that holds the rubber uh, wiper blade will come in contact and put deeper gouges in. Now these can look pretty bad, but from my experience they actually look pretty shallow. But before we get started, one of the things I just want to point out is notice how I've completely covered up this truck. Now, this is optional. You don't have to do it. You could take and wash the vehicle when you're through. A lot of the cars I work on are classics, and so I, as a practice, as a professional, don't introduce water into all the nooks and crannies of a car where rust can form, so I don't wash classic cars. I do waterless prep wash, like the Dr. Beasley's waterless prep wash. Um, so in this case, we're not going to wash it, but I also just wanted to show you if you are going to tape it off, how to tape it off. And the way you do that first, and I've already got this set up, the first thing I did was I took masking tape, this is actually frog tape, and I made a frame around the rubber seal for the window before any plastic was here. Then I placed the plastic on, cut out where the plastic's going to fit to the window, and then taped the plastic to that tape frame that I made around the windshield and it actually makes it quicker, faster and neater. And when you're machine polishing glass, while you can do this with about any orbital, the results will come faster if you use a rotary polisher. And the thing about a rotary polisher is because you're spinning that pad in a circle, centrifugal force kicks in and it tends to start throwing splatter everywhere. So that's why for me, and everybody can do this how they want to, but for me, I'd rather tape everything off and save a lot of time at the end of the process not cleaning things up with the toothbrush, with a toothbrush like this, <laughs> and, and, uh, and then um, and just make the whole process neater, cleaner. And also, some cars, by the way, a lot of classic cars, they'll have chrome or stainless steel trim around the window, and you'll get that splatter up underneath there, and it's almost impossible to get out of there without taking the trim off. So, for me, the way I like to detail cars, I just want to tape this off and I actually come back with a microfiber towel after I've secured all my tape and I use the towel to really push this down hard. And the reason why is because once this lifts, say you get some water, some polish under it, there's no way it's going back down again. So it takes a little bit of time to really push this down and it's easier to push it down with the towel than it is with my skin. So that's kind of the prep work. And of course, I cleaned the glass before we started. So there's no stray or air or dirt or dust on there. So now when we talk about machine polishing glass and taking scratch out of glass, Historically, these were always done with products that were based on cerium oxide. And that's an that's a option that will work today as good as it always did. But one of the things that happened is um, Dr. Beasley, Jim Lefebvre, the owner, founder, and head chemist for Dr. Er, for Dr. Beasley products, he was working on a glass polish, and this is before I joined the team. And he sent it to me because he knew I did a lot of glass polishing, and he asked me to test it out. And I have three polishes here, and I thought I'd just share these with you. Here's the original formula he sent to me. And after I tried it, I thought it was good, but it needed some more lubrication and some other key ingredients. So this one here he made, it's actually got my name on there, MP. And I tested this one and said, Jim, love it, and then this is final production. They all three worked, it's just that the final production was kind of more tweaked for rotary work and for, because you generate a lot of heat, so you need a little more slip as you're buffing. So besides, uh, and, and now the other thing I just want to point out is these use a proprietary abrasive, okay? 
Uh, I can't tell you what it is, but I can tell you the only other person or only entity that uses this is the military for polishing out sapphire canopies on fighter jets. So it's a very high-tech abrasive, and in my own experience, and I probably have more how-to articles and more videos on polishing glass than anybody breathing. So in my experience, it cuts and works better than anything I've ever used. So besides the right polish, you also need the right pad. Now this is a rayon pad. I have a five inch and a three inch, and you can get these on drbeasleys.com. And the thing about this, um, you need something that's hard like this rayon pad that kind of traps the abrasive between the glass and the pad so it can do its work faster. I've met a lot of people in my life that said, hey Mike, I read your article, I tried polishing glass, it didn't work. And I would say, what kind of pad did you use? And they'd say, oh, I, I used a foam pad. I used a microfiber pad. I used a wool pad on a rotary. Those aren't gonna work. You've gotta get the rayon pads. So, so the polish, the rayon pads, and then there's one more element here that I'll share. This is an interface pad. It's just a foam interface pad and it provides cushion. And you don't have to have this, but I'm telling you straight up, most backing plates, even flexible ones are, are hard. I mean, that's a hard surface. Your glass, that's hard. The pad is thin and hard, so everything is hard, and what that does is it transfers all that polishing action into you, and it's kind of, it, it's not a comfortable feeling. So by simply adding this interface pad, it smooths out the action of the polisher. So highly recommended, and you can find these just about anywhere on Amazon. This is actually a six inch one that I, whoops, wrong way, that I cut down for this five inch pad. Okay, so center these up really good. And of course, uh, for the three inch, you would use a three inch uh, backing plate. And I'll tell you what these are good for. I'm gonna mention this real quick so I don't forget. The, when you look at the uh, circumference of a larger five or six inch pad, a lot of times they don't. This, on this particular car would probably work to get into the corners, but a lot of cars have a, a more um, defined corner and the larger pad won't get into there. So what happens, you got this beautifully polished out glass, whether you're doing subsurface or topical, but you notice in the corners that it never got polished. So it's a good idea if you got a windshield that has more tighter corners to get the three inch pad. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. I'm just gonna take and put some of this product right onto the face of the pad. And um, what you can see up here is, if you look, you see that there's an arc pattern that mimics the way that the wiper blades move over the windshield. And what I'm gonna do for demonstrations purposes is I'm just gonna run that polisher back and forth right here for about 10 minutes. And then we'll take a look at the before and after results. Uh, Angel, could you grab me some tape? I think you'll find some back there. I wanna put a couple tape lines down. Um, in the real world, glass, you gotta keep in mind, it's not gonna correct paint. I'm gonna imagine a lot of people watching this video now and into the future work on a lot of paint, do a lot of paint correction. Paint, if you gotta pull scratches out of it, it works pretty good, okay, uh, pretty fast. But glass is hard, so it's not gonna buff like paint or even gel coat. Uh, so it's gonna take you longer. And um, one of the benefits to writing articles about glass polishing that date back, I think about 2010, so that's 13 years. So one of the benefits of writing articles about this is you get to see people's comments for over a decade. So here's the most common comment I think I've ever seen. How's that look, Yancey? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the most common comment I see from people goes something like this. Hey Mike, I read your article, I bought all the stuff, tried to polish the glass, it didn't work. And the problem was is they didn't have patience or persistence, okay? It's not gonna buff out like that. You gotta spend some time with it. For me, and I'm pretty good at this, it would take me about two hours, after all the prep work, two hours of solid polishing to do this half and the other half. Maybe three, because this has some pretty bad wiper marks. But that's not, that's not taking any breaks at all. That's just polishing, 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 never stopping. And one of the things you want to avoid doing is getting the glass too hot. Now, I've gotten glass like super hot. I've never seen a negative downside to it. But experts say you can get the glass 160 to 180 degrees. So just keep that in mind. So one of the ways that you can keep the temperature down 
um, but I'm not going to show you because it doesn't work in this kind of demonstration, is, uh, for example, if anybody read the article where I did the 1969 GTO windshield, is I would buff on this half of the windshield for about 10 minutes, then I'd go to that side and buff on that side. While I'm buffing at that side, this side's cooling down. Come back over to this side, pick up where I left off, while I'm buffing on this side, that side's cooling down. So divide the car up and actually travel back and forth, and that way you can keep the temperature down. Okay, so here's my product. Cord over shoulder. Okay, so I spread my product out, and this is a Flex PE14. I forget the exact part number, I put a sticker over it. But usually you want to be at about the 24 to 2600 RPM range. And for, the, for this, this is on the 4 to 5 setting. So and because that's a brand new pad, let's make a new dry. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit more product because what it did down, it just kind of self-primed itself. There we go. Okay. Okay, then once you've got your product spread out, it's just time to start buffing. And I, I'm putting about five to 10 pounds of pressure on the head of this polisher. And there we're at the five setting. I'd also recommend, if you're gonna do this type of work, to wear earplugs. Normally, I would have them in. Angel, can you time me for 10 minutes? Now one of the things you can do if you want, you don't have to with this type of polish, is you can actually kind of reactivate the abrasives, but also create lubrication, which means create slip to keep temperatures down just by misting a little bit of water on there. Now I know watching me buff on this glass can be kind of like watching uh, grass grow or paint drop. Apologies. One of the things I, I was um, important to me and also important to Jim was to show this in real time, to show this live, because so much of what you see on the internet is mocked up. So I always like to practice what I call the real deal, real world detailing, because there ain't no mock up going on right now. So tell you what, Angel, won't you just let me know when it's five minutes and we'll go ahead and wipe off and look. See if we can see if there's a before and after difference here. What's interesting is from my angle, I can't actually see if I'm taking the scratches out. We positioned this truck on purpose to make sure everybody else could see the scratches. Yancey, is it, you seen a before and after difference there? Yeah, so far. Okay, so let me keep going. Yeah. Okay. 
and everybody out there in the internet land, if you guys have questions, we have a couple tech guys in the comments right now. We have Chris and Victor in there. They'll answer your questions. Then once we're done with the demo, we will bring in you guys as live comments. And if you have questions for Mike, he'll take them live. Now for really severe glasses, uh, scratches, scratches in glass, you can actually machine sand glass. Uh, I have an article up on the Dr. Beasley's blog. It's where I machine sanded a, the back window for a 1970 Plymouth Superbird. And we sanded that down with 180 grit, worked our way up to 4,000 grit, and then polishing came out perfect. And that takes out the deeper scratches. <laughs> We got about a minute left. Good. Oh, you act like that was work or something. <laughs> I'm working that polisher pretty good. Um, okay, so tell you what, I want to leave the tape line there for you to capture the before and after, and then I will also pull it off. Let me get some splatter out of the way. The, the, the product itself has different lubricating agents in it. And those can actually mask the ugliness of the scratches. So, like I always like to say, we want to preserve the ugly. Uh, Yancey, can you tell me when that looks pretty streak free? Oh, uh, the top to me is about there. You go. Even if I just get the middle part, so they can okay. big picture tell the difference. All right. Okay. Right. And I'm gonna walk over here behind you because I want to see myself how it looks. And you can still see some. I mean, for granted, that was only 10 minutes. All right. Okay. But if you were to redo, I mean, take off the tape, there we go. this is where you're going to see the big before and after. Then wipe your lines. Oh. Okay. You don't have any glass cleaner in there? You know, sometimes spraying water to clean it for uh, just makes a bigger mess. Let me just. See what I can do up in dry towel. How's that looking? Oh, you got streaks. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's the Glass tape. is not your forte. It's the, it's the tape residue. Yeah, well. I know it is. All right, but if you're looking, okay, you can see how going back and forth. See the big old streaks right there. Now watch me go up. See how they diminish? These are really bad too. So and see how they come back again. So here's the point. If a little bit of buffing removes a little bit of the wiper marks, a lot of buffing will remove all the buffing marks. And that's why I say it takes patience and persistence, but you can remove them. Now, some people, in fact, one person already said to me, hey, Mike, a newer pickup like this, why don't you just replace the glass? Okay, so. Uh, to, just to let you know, this window brand new LMC truck is about 150 bucks. Shipping's about 350. A new gasket, you're five, six hundred bucks in before it gets to your driveway or your garage. Then you got to pay someone to install it. But here's the reason why sometimes it's not an option to replace glass. One, 
it could be that the owner of the car is trying to keep it all original. Um, there's a car behind me back here. It's all original. It's a 1952 Nash. Oh, that one. And the one that's totally behind you. I had looked to see if there is any replacement windows for that car, but chances are if they are, they're about as rare as hen's teeth. Um, so Rare as what? Hen's teeth. That's okay. an, old, an old cliche. Okay, so the other reason why is because um, you know, we're trying to keep it all original so you don't want to replace the glass too. So original glass might not be available, okay? So just, there might not be. I did a 67 Ferrari last summer. There were no replacement windows for it, so that was not an option. And they wanted to put this Ferrari into a, a judging at a, a car, at a concourse, so uh, you will get dinged points if there's scratches in the glass. So I polished them all out. And then the other reason why is because a lot of times if you take the glass out of a, a car, what you're gonna find is rust, and really bad rust is called cancer in the car guy world, you'll find cancer and no self-respecting car person is going to put a new windshield in and leave the rust there. So by taking the glass out, what you've done is you've taken a, a windshield replacement project and turned it into a five or 10 year off frame rotisserie roast restoration project. So some people don't want to take their car off the road for that long. So the glass isn't available, they want to keep it all original and you don't want to turn um, the project into a money pit. So there's three reasons to polish out glass. Okay, so, no, I mean, I think these results speak for themselves. Right? Like I said, it'd take me at least two to three hours. So that means buffing this side here, if this was a two hour project, for a whole hour, not 10 minutes. No, I mean, you can see the tube <sighs> lights right in the middle of my screen right here. <laughs> you can see it go from very, very bad right there to better. And that wasn't very, even a complete 10 minutes because I stopped and took a couple breaks to add more product to my pad. But that is the process. It's not super complicated. I'd say the most important thing is, is again, for me personally, is I don't want to dig splatter out of the nooks and crannies, rubber trim, plastic trim on a new car. You have pebble textured plastic around the wiper arms. Um, you know, you can clean all this stuff later on and it'll wash off, but I'd rather just cover it up and avoid it all in the first place. Um, having the right pad, the right tool, the right product, covering everything up, and then that uh, the two key ingredients, this and patience. Also takes a little bit of forearm muscle. I usually tell people I polish out of glass, you'll fill it here in your delts, so. Yeah, and actually from this angle right here, you can see where the wiper goes up, then it immediately stops where your line was at. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. That's you it. did it. Yeah, thank you. If a little bit of buffing does a little bit of work, then a lot of buffing will get it all. It's just put the time, put the effort in. And by the way, when this live detailing class is over, the owner and his son are sitting over there behind Yancey. I'm gonna hook them up with a rotary on that side, the side that's not quite as bad. We're gonna tag team this and we'll take a video when we're all done to show you the final results. And I usually like to aim for 100% defect removal, but when it comes to glass, I'm, I'm really good with 90, 95, because some scratches are so deep, the only way to remove them is to machine sand. And, and here's the thing about machine sanding. You can't just say you had a scratch, say right here. You can't just machine sand that scratch and then buff it out. You will see a visual imperfection in the glass. So if you're gonna sand glass, you gotta sand the entire glass. And I always tell people, <laughs> and uh, I'm comfortable doing that. I've done it a whole bunch of the last 10 years. But I always tell people that you wanna be careful if you take a project like that on because sanding glass is easy. That's putting scratches in, okay? Anybody can do that. I could do that blindfolded. The tricky part is getting them 100% out. That's where it takes some talent, some skill, and a little bit of experience. All right, you wanna take some questions? Sure, yeah. All right. All right, let me get everything on here. And I'm gonna bring myself up so I'm not a voice from the nether. Okay, we have... Uh, Okay, here's a good one. This one's from G, uh, GNJ152. Can it be done once or twice or just for maintenance? Oh, for sure. Um, you know, uh, my, my daily driver, my, what I call my airport car, is a QX50. And uh, it's a 2019. And I went to test the glass coating on it. And I thought, well, this will be no problem. I'll just wash the car like I normally do. And the glass will be clean. And I'll put the coating on. Well, after washing it, pulling it in here into good lights and looking at it, there was light wiper marks, real light, but they were there, they were visible. And uh, a couple passes with this completely eliminated them. So yeah, you could use this as a fitness product, but 
probably more important is um, if, you, if you ever look closely, and I, I know, Yancey, you've done this with me before. If you take a, a glass cleaner or a spray detailer and you mist your window and you wipe it, for that brief moment right where you wipe, a lot of times you'll see the water spots and what I call drizzle stains, where water, just drizz, water yep. drizzles down, drizzles down every time it rains or gets wet. And those types of things don't wash off, okay? So it builds up on the glass, builds up on the paint, builds up on the glass. So you can use this polish for both topical glass polishing to get that glass perfectly clean, or for subsurface glass polishing to remove below surface defects like swirls, scratches, and um, wiper marks like we just did here. Pits, you know, people ask me all the time, can you remove pits? The problem with pits is, is they tend to be deeper than it looks, so they're like a deep scratch. So yes, you can remove. I've done it. I did a Mercedes Benz, had tiny pits, took them all out just using the glass polish. But it um, just depends on how deep they are because the whole goal, if you've got a defect in the glass, you have to take the upper surface to the depth of the scratch or the, the pit you're trying to remove. So all that material's got to get removed off there. So it's just back to patience, persistence, a little bit of deltoid muscle. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I, I got to put this one out there just because I love the comment. Uh, Tug R, Dr. B deserves more attention. Be sure to subscribe, like and subscribe. Yes. <laughs> yeah, people. like and subscribe. You know, um, next we're going to do these live uh, detailing classes every Wednesday starting at 4 p.m. Eastern, which is 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific time and Central and Mountain people can figure it out on their own. But if Yancey pans over here, I'm not sure what the topic is going to be for next week, but over here we've got the iconic fishbowl otherwise known as the 1978 AMC Pacer, which was the car used on Wayne's World. Wayne's World, Wayne's World. <laughs> and Why in fact, there's on? a picture of the Wayne's World in the back of this one. Now, this car's been repainted, and it is, it's like, why did they even try to sand it? Because they didn't even get their sanding marks out. So it's completely swirled out. I've got a video that shows all the holograms in the paint out in sun, but we're gonna bring this in, and I'll either do a video on how to machine dry sand, followed by how to use the rotary buffer, or maybe just how to use the rotary polisher to pull out, to, to really get in there and cut out the deeper scratches. You know what? That? The only time that you can do that is you have to have to be in costume. You actually have to be Wayne and oh. I'll be Garth. No. <laughs> yeah, you'll be Garth and I'll be Wayne. I'll have to rewatch the movie. It's yeah. been at least what? 20 years that since I've seen it. That ought to be interesting. It. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Did they just wear some plaid shirts and t-shirts or something? Oh, no, man. You got to oh. talk wings, man. All right, let me bring myself back up here again. Okay. Uh, but anyway, that next week's topic will be using the very iconic 1978 AMC Pacer. All right. Let's go down to here. And the good news is, is we always have cool stuff going through here. So the topics will always be changing, but they'll always be fun and interesting. All right. I know we have some people. We have uh, some people tuning in from Phoenix, Arizona. We have Stuart, Florida. We have a local boy, Stu uh, Tom. He's coming in from here. Oh, we have Grant Hottree is on here. And Alaska. Julie. Oh, it's Julie from Alaska. All right, now it's official. It's, we're officially back. Julie made it. <laughs> Hi, Julie. So, Julie, uh, this is a great story. Julie flew down to one of my big three day classes from Alaska. And um, in that particular class, uh, and I know Julie will back me up, there were no chairs, there were no sitting, it's all hands-on. Uh, we detailed 12 cars in two days and two boats on Sunday. So, I mean, if you think about it, that volume of cars, when would you sit down? There's just no sitting. Now, I got no problem with academic classes. If you wanna go sit and look at a PowerPoint and that's how you learn, that's the class you should go to. But I find a lot of people like me, we learn better by doing versus sitting in a chair. So if you find you're like that, you like to learn by actually getting the tools in your hands and working on real cars, not just a demo hood, then you need to get to one of our classes. Not only do you learn a lot, they're fast paced, but they're also a lot of fun. And we got two classes coming. We got a class coming up in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin, and that's uh, uh, Thursday, September 21st, and Friday, September 22nd. And uh, that's at the Lake Country Manufacturing Pads Detailing Center. And last I checked, there was only two or three spaces left for that. So that's, those are gonna be hands-on classes. I, we got amazing cars to work on that are trash because we're gonna go over paint corrections, ceramic coatings. We're gonna go over dry sanding, machine dry sanding using rotary polishers. So there's two, more, two or three more spaces left for that one. And then coming up uh, at the very end of this month, I think it's October 28th, 29th and 
or September 29th and the 1st, whatever that Friday, Saturday, Sunday is, there's a class right here. And then the weekend after SEMA is going to be a three-day class here. And I'm going to bring in the coolest cars and the worst conditioned boats so you have the best training and learning experience. Okay, you done shamelessly yeah, plugging yes. yourself? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Can't take that out of you. All right, now here's a question from Mario. Uh, I think this is a good question. Uh, so isn't all glass different? Is glass on newer cars different than on older cars? Well, it, you know, technology, just like the phone you buy today is probably a lot different than the phone you bought last year. So yeah, technology is always changing. So, but here's the deal. That question comes up all the time, but here's the deal. If you've got a brand new car, let's just pick a, pick a car, Yancey, any new car. Pick Tesla. A, Tesla, brand new Tesla. Okay. If it's brand new, there shouldn't be anything wrong with the glass. If there is, it's probably under warranty. Take it back to the dealership. Let them deal with it. But yeah, always do your due diligence. You know, technology is always changing. I, I can't, you know, look, if you've ever followed me in my detailing career, you really don't see me working on new cars too much. If you do, it's like a Corvette, Maserati, Lamborghini, something exotic, something high performance. It's usually not a Toyota 2023 Toyota Camry, or it's stuff like this. It's street rods, muscle cars, things that are cool, things that people put money into and fix up. That's usually what I like to polish the paint on. And the glass on most of that stuff is older technology, and yes, it is going to be Okay, to be now, up. Julie wants to know, are you going to be at SEMA? Yes, I'll be at SEMA. Hey, thanks for asking, Julie. Uh, to, uh, to SEMA always starts, in case you don't know, is always the first week in November. Um, Monday is setup day, so it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And this year, I'm going to be at the Lake Country booth from 9 to 11, all three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'll be at the Flex booth from 11 to 2, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then I'll be at the um, Braun Brush uh, booth uh, right after the Flex booth for about an hour. Then from uh, 3 to 5, I'll be at the Grickard booth with our good friends Luann and uh, Doug Lamb. Okay. All right. Moving on. Another question. Jose. Hey, I remember this name. Uh, hello from Cal, Texas, San Antonio, Texas. Quick question. How often do you spray water to lubricate the surface? Also, is it better to lubricate with water more than the actual product? Uh, well, a good question. Uh, either or. Um, if, if I'm lubricating with water, it's probably trying to be, uh, just get more for the buck. Because you do reactivate the... the, the is there's two things when you talk about a polish, this is a polish, there's two things, there's the abrasives and the formula. The formula are the things the abrasives are embodied in and that's what tends to dry up and wear out. The abrasives are cut, gonna cut longer, so by spraying a little water in there, you reactivate it and you get more bang for the buck. But yeah, if uh, money's no object, just add some more product. When, when I use waters, usually what I teach in all my classes, and I, I teach this a lot, is the buddy system. Okay, so the buddy system is when things go faster if you got two people versus one. Glass polishing is one of them. If I got a buddy, I could have him spray some water while I continue to buff. Otherwise, I got to stop what I'm doing, grab the bottle, spray, put it back down, grab the polisher, throw the cord over, go back to polishing. So I always recommend the buddy system for glass polishing. Um, I also do that for uh, a lot of other processes, like uh, ceramic coatings is a good buddy system. All right, uh, example. let's do another question here from Rich Nealon. Do you think it's a good idea to DA to ensure no swirls? You know, the interesting thing about that is I've never seen holograms in glass. Uh, that was the first thing I thought about when I first did my first rotary glass polishing. But hey, if you want to, yeah, go back. You know, uh, 12 years ago, um, one of the things I did was I wrote an article and I, I actually demonstrated it my, on my wife's Honda at the time, horrible wiper marks. And I took them all out using the simple entry-level, age-old tool, the Porter Cable. An eight millimeter, free-spinning, random orbital polisher. And here's my thought process. If you can maintain pad rotation, it's doing the same thing a rotary does. It's rotating the pad. It's throwing a little oscillation in there too. But the key thing is, is if you can maintain the rotation, it'll do the same thing a rotary did. And here's what I thought. A lot of people don't own a rotary. A lot of people are scared of a rotary, but a lot of people got a tool like the Porter Cable. And so when I wrote that article, it was to open up the market to more people to be able to polish glass because they could use the tool they already owned, not the tool that they might be scared of. By the way, in all my detailing classes, by nine o'clock in the morning, I have one of these in your hands working on a car. You're not sitting in a chair, but using a rotary, the most scary tool out there. First thing, first day. All right, this, this <laughs> one's for Chris, the director of success. The voice from the nether. <laughs> he wrote it in there. <laughs> 
All right, but no, going down here, we have, we have some love. Mario Santiago. Hi, Philip, I love you. <laughs> All right, and then we have Humberto, which is always following us everywhere we go. Um, great to see Mike and Yance again. It's always fun to be back on, actually, instead of the talking head. Now I'm actually there. Uh, here's a question for you from Jesse B. How durable are the rayon pads? Uh, Reusable, you know, how many times can we use them before replacing them? I, so I love when we get good questions, you know, so here's the deal. The rayon pads are durable. These are from Lake Country. And so there's, there's three components to primarily any pad. There's the pad material, there's the adhesive to bond it to the Velcro, the hook and loop. And um, I've thrown these through the washing machine and then into, oh, I always air dry them, but I, I, I hand wash them first. Throw a dedicated load, so only my glass polishing pads into the washing machine, small load, and then uh, let them air dry. And I still have pads that are probably a couple years old. I, before this started, I had one that was about a year old, and I just thought, eh, for video, people are going to be watching me closely. Let's go ahead and throw a new pad on. And a shout out to uh, um, uh, Scott Voles up there at Lake Country for sending me some new pads to the video today. Thank you, Scott. All right, we got uh, Justin Gaddy coming in from North Carolina. You remember his judge? He's got the GTO. I think it's a 69 yeah, uh, GTO one. judge. Yeah. Uh, then we have Ron Eilert. I always say his last name wrong. Um, we're not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have Bunny. Ah, Bunny. Bunny Footloads. I love this guy's name. How do all? And then we had a question in here. Do, 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 do. Oh, right here. Uh, Caribbean Sparkle Real Talk. Oh, that's yep. the user. Yep. Okay. Seems like this product can be used for headlights too. You know, I haven't tested it on plastic. Um, the, the, the particle size is, um, is molecular. It's very, very tiny. Uh, maybe Chris Ricana could uh, expound on that. But for, for headlights, you know, I don't know. Uh, this one, to me, this wouldn't be the right product. I'd use a, a headlight compound or an aggressive compound. In uh, my classes, I try to bring in really bad headlights, and we show how to machine sand them, then polish them out. But uh, no, I don't think, if, if it's a glass headlight, that'd be one thing. But if it's just a plastic headlight on a, a modern car, stick with uh, high-tech abrasive technology that's used for car paint. It's probably a better luck. It, it might work. I just never tried it. Okay. Let's do a couple more, then I think there, that we can wrap there, it up. There's an old saying, the right tool for the job, you know. This is the glass so. This is the glass polish. <laughs> All right. So now... Oh, we got Beasley come in. Uh, let's put this up there since you said that. <laughs> Thank you, Victor. Headlights and glass are made from different material. Headlights are made from polycarbonate, so it doesn't have white light glass. Yep. All right, there you go. Victor, for the win. Everybody give Victor a round of applause. All right, we got <laughs> Justin Backarn here again. Excited for this demo. Want to buy this for my glass or my GTO. Yes. Prime example, the reason why you'd want to do this. And you guys are probably listening to a voice from the nether here because I keep on forgetting. Yeah, you know, just to share, uh, I, I work on so many older cars and in, until you go and actually look to see if there's scratches in the glass, a lot of times you don't see because you're looking at the car. And nowadays I just instinctively look at the glass as it got scratches. And there's so many cases where they do, especially when they come from up north because a lot of times it snows, they get ice on the windshield, and they take whatever's in their hand, their keys, they're in the glove box, and they scrape that snow off and they scratch that glass. Okay, come over to this over here. All right, now we just have a couple more. <laughs> I love this guy's name too. And the Harry Power Wash Detailing. Harry, Harry Power. I know that. Like I know that, that person. It's like Harry Potter. Yes. All right, sorry. All right, never mind. The team is back. That's so I got to get back to work here too. I got to. All right, you got to get back to work. All right, so <laughs> let me go ahead and take me off of here. Actually, I'm gonna come in. So every Wednesday, right? Every Wednesday, let's bring you back up on here. Every Wednesday. Every Wednesday. Three, three, three Yeah, first, I did hear you. Yeah. Every yeah, Wednesday, just stay 4 p.m. Stay tuned to the social channels. Yep. It's three times a month. Um, and then we're going to be producing content to go along with it. There, yep. I'm back on here, so it's not a talking head. Yeah. And actually, it's four times a month. So the month, the, the week that you're not here, we're just going to wing it without you. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> All right. So you, he'll do. You're going you're gonna to hopefully teach my assistant how to do some of this on an iPhone. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, every Wednesday at 4, 4 p.m. Eastern, Eastern time, time there will be a Pacific. live detailing class. Three of those a month will be me helping them put this on. 
so that way we get some really good footage. Um, then they're going to wing it, they said. <laughs> That's fine. Winging it. Winging it. <laughs> but then we're also, so you know, uh, Mike and I will be producing some more online videos, some shorter little videos, how-to videos, showing you guys how to use Dr. Beasley's products so they can solve the problems that you guys have out there in the real world. Yes. And with that, I think I'm going to tune off here, and you're going to tune off here, and uh, why don't you tell them any new exciting things? You, what, tease next week? I anything? Uh, well, this next week is going to be something fun with the AMC, sir. So tune back in, and uh, I'm sure it'll be fun. It'll be a lot. This thing's really in bad shape. So, All right. Stay by. Yep. Me, I'll go back to work. All right. Yeah, like you work. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you.